वर्णिवे शर्मणीय दर्शनम मंदहासरचिराननाज पूजित सुरनरोमेर्मुदा धर्मनंदनम विचित धर्मनंदनम विचित श्रीघनश्याम महाराज जय Almighty Supreme Lord Bhagwan Swami Narayan Pujya Bhat Guru Ji all of you it is my humble Jai Swami Narayan <coughs> We have discussed about Bhagwan and the importance of his devotees and his ekantik sant just as how oxygen as well as the food and water are important for our human life in the same way bhagwan's divine form and the company of bhagwan's ekantik sant as well as devotees these are for us for our religious life they are oxygen and food and water we have discussed for these two points in our previous lecture now today we are going to discuss about the nature form of bhagwan then after how we take our oxygen in the form of bhagwan's divine form into our heart and how we should have a company of bhagwan's ekantik sant and bhagwan's devotee so that we can remain healthy in our satsang so first of all bhagwan's divine form what is the nature and exact form of bhagwan according to our scriptures when we overview on the philosophy of hinduism we can find two types of opinion opinion regarding the form of bhagwan some scholars says bhagwan is formless the other says bhagwan has divine form our philosophy bhagwan swami narayan himself described in in the siksha patra as well as in the vachanamrut and our nan santo as well as the great authors all they describe bhagwan has divine form but bhagwan is never formless so first point is that bhagwan is with divine form in the vachanamrut 13th chapter of gada second bhagwan himself says in this vachanamrut the form of bhagwan has two arms and two legs not four eight or a thousand arms and its appearance is very captivating the form is very certain it has a human form and it appears young like a teenager sometimes the form is the divine light sometimes in the form sometimes the form in the divine light is seen standing sometimes sitting and at other times it is seen walking around it is surrounded on the four sides by groups of muktas who are seated facing him and who are engrossed in looking at that form of god with a fixed gaze this is the very exact form which is always and forever resides in the divine light of bhagwan's divine abad aksardham this is the exact picture of aksardham in the middle of aksardham 
in the aksharam there is luminousness means masses of lights and in that light bhagwan forever reside in the middle of that aksharam what bhagwan is doing in the aksharam bhagwan is forever reside that is bhagwan's house just as we are living in our home bhagwan is forever living in his divine abode aksharam in that aksharam just as we are not living alone in our home we have more other or relatives in the home you have your parents your brother your sister who also living with you in your home same way bhagwan has also his divine muktas muktas means the liberated souls divine personalities bhagwan has the company of these divine muktas the muktas are in countless countless muktas are reside in the aksharam with bhagwan and all the muktas are always seated in front of bhagwan and they always look looking on the face of bhagwan with fake gaze in this abode of bhagwan there is no pain there is no grief there is no sorrow there is only and only eternal happiness what you want to become in the aksharam you immediately become that form if you desire to become a tree for pleasing bhagwan you immediately become tree to pleasing bhagwan in this way all the muktas taking different forms engage in the service of bhagwan and other muktas now this is the divine form of bhagwan the second characteristic of bhagwan is that bhagwan even though when bhagwan take birth on this earth he look like human but still he is divine he look like our like an ordinary person but bhagwan is bhagwan he is not an ordinary man sometimes in the life episode of bhagwan swami narayan we can find so many humanity as well as we can also find some divinity but when bhagwan swami narayan did not desire to show the other persons his divinity at the time he behave as an ordinary human being but at the time a person who has devotion for bhagwan he always understand that this is not the real form of bhagwan but bhagwan is divine whether he is performing these kinds of charitra but he is divine so the question is that why bhagwan is not behaving as divine means only divine in this earth while he is as a human form the simple reason behind this question is that bhagwan always remain and behave as a human being because if bhagwan behave divinely on this earth nobody can even enjoy his darshan nobody can even enjoy or even listen his divine voice even today bhagwan is ready to say something to us but it is not our capacity to listen his divine words and that is why for liberating countless souls bhagwan take birth as a human and while giving his darshan while giving his some prasadi to others and speaking with someone not speaking with someone touching someone in this way in any way a person who came in contact of bhagwan's divine form 
even though the form is like as a human form but as he is not human bhagwan is divine and that's why a soul a person who came in contact of bhagwan's form he definitely attained bhagwan's divine abode and get ultimate liberation only to granting countless millions of jeevs ultimate liberation bhagwan assumes human form on this earth and bhagwan also taking birth to give some eternal pleasure to his devotees when a devotee who desire to worship bhagwan when a devotee who desire to offer some food to bhagwan bhagwan is always ready to accept whatever the offerings of offering from the devotee and that is why bhagwan also for this reason bhagwan also taking birth on this earth this is the two qualities of bhagwan now our main point is that bhagwan is like an oxygen just as we taking oxygen for living on this earth similarly to living in this satsang for our religious life we have to consume maharaj's divine form as an oxygen now how to consume an oxygen just you are breathing when you breathe when you take in uh, take oxygen through your nose into your heart at that time the the next second you automatically your body your heart throw the carbon dioxide out similarly in our religious life in our satsang if we want to take want to take oxygen into our heart if we want to behold the form of bhagwan in our heart we should first clear our heart our carbon dioxide in the form of our bad natures worldly desire our wishes to attain some worldly status these all bad things we have to remove from our heart just as we re- we throw out the carbon dioxide from our heart to take an oxygen similarly we have to sun all these bad things from our life and when our heart is empty then and then bhagwan is enter in our heart this is the universal principle that if your gl- glass of water is full with the water nobody can pour more water in the glass if your glass is empty then and then one can fill the glass with the water same thing if we have some bad natures bad habits some addiction then bhagwan cannot enter our heart if we want to enjoy bhagwan's divine pleasure his eternal happiness we have to sun all these bad things from our life from our heart and even ego arrogance matsar the lust anger these all bad things we have to remove from our heart when our heart is clear bhagwan automatically enter in our heart but for this we have to practice we have to first observe our own self bhagwan says one a person who does not observe his own self is the fullest of all the foolish persons if we want to enter bhagwan in into our heart we have to first clear our heart and to clear our heart we have to first observe our heart whether some impurities remain in our heart or not if we have some bad nature we have to remove but to remove the bad nature we have to first 
accept the truth that i have these kind of bad natures bad habits and vices in my heart in my thought if we realize our own fault then we try to remove it and for removing such faults we have to accept the refuge of bhagwan's ekantik sant science says that if you do not do any activity still your energy will become less your energy always become less because when you when your body is busy in in the process or in the progress of breathing breath in and breath out this also consume your energy in the same way if you you do not do anything in the satsang but if you want to enter bhagwan into your heart for this purpose your energy will consume and you are, you if you have no energy then how can you doing your pro, uh, this process of behold beholding the form of bhagwan in your heart and for that purpose how you earn more, more energy you have only one source and that is to have a company of bhagwan's ekantik sant and his devotees if we have a company of bhagwan's ekantik sant and devotee then we automatically get some extra energy so that we can breathe breathing and we can consume an oxygen in our heart in the form of bhagwan's divine form so in this way in our life in in our religious life we have two pro, two process we have to do two process one is to behold the form of bhagwan and to beholding the, beholding the form of bhagwan in our heart we have to remove all impurities from our heart the second one is that to gain some energy to learn how to practice the beholding the form of bhagwan in our heart and also the method of removing all impurities from our heart we have only one way and that is we have only one preacher who can preach us the method of beholding the bhagwan's form in our heart as well as to removing the impurities from our heart there is only one preacher and that is bhagwan's ekantik sant just as we are in the school or college we have all the books but from books we can only read but not learn and understand all the things same thing happen in religious we have vachanamrut and sikshapatri and all other books but we can merely read it but not we can practice the method which is described in the scriptures our own self in our own life and for that we have to accept the refuge of bhagwan's ekantik sant so that sant can preach us the method of removing the impurities as well as the beholding the form of bhagwan in our heart and then when we accept bhagwan's ekantik sant's word as a most beneficial for our life and if we practice if we behave exactly according to the word, bhagwan's ekantik sant's word his instructions then we can we can successfully remove our impurities from our heart as well as bhagwan's ekantik sant graces the divine form of bhagwan into our heart this is the only method but there is no any other method to be holding the form of bhagwan in our heart and for that first removing the impurities from our heart in this way our life remain healthy in this religion in our satsang but in other perspective if we think if we have no bhagwan's divine form in our heart and only impurities remain in our heart still we can 
able to behold the Bhagwan's form in our heart and remove all the impurities. But if we have the company of Bhagwan's Ekantik Sant, so the in our worldly, in our this human life, we have the most necessary thing is oxygen. But in the spiritual life, we have the most necessary thing is the company of Bhagwan's Ekantik Sant. If we have the company, then Bhagwan automatically come in our life. If Bhagwan's Ekantik Sant is in our life, if we have his refuse, if we accept his word as the most beneficial for us and we always obey his commands, we always accept his advices, his instructions, then one day Bhagwan automatic automatically come in our heart without even doing more practice for beholding the form of Bhagwan because the Sant pray to Bhagwan, Bhagwan please this is your devotee he practice to behold your form in his heart so please grace upon that devotee and you enter in in the heart of the devotee then due to the grace due to the prayer of Bhagwan's Ekantik Sant, Bhagwan one day come into our heart and when Bhagwan come into our heart then even some impurities remain as a two or three person or five person that impurity also remove from our heart now after that process if we can achieve this status beholding the Bhagwan's divine form in our heart now our duty is that we have to keep the form of Bhagwan forever in our heart if we forget the Bhagwan's divine form Bhagwan will Bhagwan will not ready to stay in our heart. If we enter some impurities in our heart in the form of lust, anger, avarice, matsar, jealousy, etc., then Bhagwan automatically come out from our heart. In this way, this is the process of beholding the form of Bhagwan in our heart. We have discussed this method with the analogies of oxygen and food and water which we always and forever in the human form, human body for living on this earth we always consume both the things oxygen as well as food and water we have taken the same example in the spiritual life and we have with the help of this analogy discuss about the Bhagwan's divine form as well as the need and importance of the keeping the company of Bhagwan's Ekantik Sant as well as devotees. So now from today we have not only you but as I also we both together have to try beholding the form of Bhagwan in our heart and for that just try to remove all our impurities, our bad natures and for that contact Bhagwan's Ekantik Sant because only Sant can grant us both the method of removing the impurities as well as beholding the form of Bhagwan in our heart. Ganshyam Maharajani Jai Prabhutava Murati Vinodakari Palapana Visare Nahi Jovisari Jugala Charana Sola Chinna Deha Najada Semi Peroho Amarieha 
लगन श्याम महाराज नी जय स्वामी नारायण भगवान नी जय सुप्रीम एनिटी और बलवेद भगवान स्वामी नारायण पूज्यपाद गुरु जी पूज्य संतो एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डिवोडीज जय स्वामी नारायण आई वॉन्ट पुट यू इन हाइपथेटिकल सिचुएशन राइट नाउ suppose that you had the hardest day of school so you come home dragging that heavy backpack you throw it in the corner not wanting to even see it for that whole night and you completely just jump on your couch grab the remote control and start turn it on and start to watch tv you're flipping through the channels and the channel of news comes on it says the headings breaking news robbery at this bank you see and the reporters are reporting that about 10 million dollars worth of diamonds and gems have been stolen from this bank and all that tiredness all that fatigue from school all goes away and you're all in you're completely wide awake and you have nothing in the world it seems like you haven't even been to school and you're very alert you become very alert your attention span becomes very sharp and you start to focus on those news what exactly each and every word that reporter is saying about the robbers the reporter is saying about the people inside of the bank what kind of situation they were in and the news continues throughout the whole day and you just watch and watch and watch wanting to find out if the robbers got caught but even if your mother or father or your friend or anyone calls you or you even have to go to the bathroom it's all ignored and your focus your intention is completely focused on that bank robbery on TV that you're watching through the news channel now this was just a hypothetical but my question to you is when we go to mandir or when we gather in an area for religious assembly and we enter the temple or the assembly and we see the idol of god in the middle of the shrine of the siyasan do we develop that same kind of sharp attention do we develop that same kind of attractive feeling that feeling where it can't be broken by anyone that focus that is unbreakable that we did when we were watching the news the other day when the bank robbery occurred 99% you're probably thinking in your minds i don't think so why because this is the news and mandir is just a daily habit when we come there we look at the form of god and that's it we don't even see what bhagwan is wearing that's why today i wanted to focus on the topic of darshan darshan is something very sacred very special and very very unique in our satsang fellowship the reason for that is because well first and foremost what is darshan for those who you don't know to see or to have the vision of the idol of god in such a way in such a divinity in such a way where just like he, how you were watching those new, news and your attention was sharply focused in the same way by thinking in one's mind that this is a supreme lord of lords the creator destroyer and sustainer of everything the all doer i am having his darshan look at how beautiful his idol is this kind of sentimental feeling this kind of 
attentive and focused vision is the very definition of darshan. And that's what I want to talk to you about today. We come to Mandir all the time. Sometimes we even, it seems like there is not even the idol of God in the shrine. We just surpass it like it's nothing. Well, there's two reasons for that. First and foremost, we haven't realized the glory of God. And secondly, we still believe God to be a mere statue, not the manifest form of God standing right in front of us. That's why. But we're going to fix everything. I'm going to give you a small formula today, and we're going to get by everything, and you're going to be okay, and Bhagwan is going to become pleased on you, and Santos are going to be pleased on you, because you learned this awesome formula, which I'm going to share with you today. So pay attention. Let's go for a ride. So now we've passed that point, and we've understood the very defini definition of darshan or doing darshan. Now, in the Vachnamrut, Bhagwan's divine, you can say, speech, there is a chapter in Sarangpur's second chapter, which pretty much narrates how Bhagwan wants us to do darshan of his idol. And I want to first read that a little bit, and then we'll go over it and understand it more. And then finally, at the end, we'll learn that formula that I was talking to you about. Swami Narayan Hare, when a devotee does darshan of God, he should do so with an attentive mind and a concentrated vision. Instead, when a person disturbs or a dog disturbs or some other animal or bird disturbs while he is doing darshan of God, he breaks his vrutti from God's darshan and begins to glance to, the, to and fro, up and down, and also see them simultaneously. God and the senior sadhu are not at all pleased upon seeing a person with such a wandering vision. So, when such a person does do darshan, how does he do it? Well, he does it just in any ordinary person does. One who has such a mundane vision should be known to be like a squirrel that squeaks and raises its tail simultaneously. He does the darshan of God and he notices other objects as well. When he begins to do darshan in such a mundane manner, he does not remain as pious as he previously was. In fact, he declines day by day. Therefore, while doing the darshan of God, one should not look from side to side. The novelty and the divinity experienced in one's heart at that time of the first darshan of God should remain exactly the same. Moreover, one should look at the form with a fixed gaze and then closing one's eyes, one should internalize that form exactly as it is in one's heart. For example, in Dharampur, Kushal Korbai did my darshan at that, at, and at the same time closed her eyes and internalized the form in her heart. Similarly, one should do darshan while keeping an attentive mind and a fixed gaze, but one should not do darshan as other ordinary people do so. Now, first and foremost, are we ordinary people or are we the satsangis of Bhagwan? Are we the devotees of God? Let's decide that in our mind and then we can move on. Well, we do come to Mandir. We do act according to the wishes of Santo. We do follow the norms of, of being a, a satsangi. So yes, we are considered to be a devotee. We're not an ordinary person, but Sometimes, some characteristics of an ordinary person are still blemished inside of us that we have to remove. And out of those characteristics, this is one of them. We, we feel like darshan, doing darshan of Bhagwan, is just such, something that's uh, ordinary and habitual. But it's something more than that. It's something that is 
very sacred, as I said, and very unique and authentic. So, keeping that in mind, Bhagwan says that first he, sa he talks about if a person should do darshan with a concentrated mind, a vision, and attentive mind. And he shouldn't be looking around even if some other disturbances come. But then he gives a beautiful example of one of his female devotees who was at a very high spiritual state at that time. And her name was Kushal Kurbai. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, a story. In southern Gujarat, there is a village called Dharampur. Now, at one time, Dharampur was actually a huge kingdom. The kingdom consisted about, of 500 different various villages. You can say that if there was a state and there was 500 different towns, that would be the kingdom. That's how big this kingdom was. And Kushal Kurbai was the queen at that time in Dharampur. So, after coming in touch with Satsang, Kushal Kurbai invited Sriji Maharaj to Dharampur. So, it was her very, very, you can say, bow or her emotional necessity to first invite Sriji Maharaj to her kingdom. Well, obviously, first and foremost, any king or queen would have no concern with Bhagwan. But at that time, Bhagwan's, you can say, status was so high. Bhagwan's name was such well known that Kushal Gorbai also invited Sriji Maharaj to her kingdom. Sriji Maharaj accepted the invitation and he went and stayed in the kingdom for about a month and a half with his saints and devotees. And Kushal Kurbai would every day feed Bhagwan with various types of food, his, uh, his saints, devotees, uh, give Bhagwan various ornaments and various garlands and all, all her riches would be given to Bhagwan. That's how much affection she had for Bhagwan. So Sri Jumar stayed there for about a month and a half and then obviously Bhagwan has to also move on and go to different devotees' homes and villages to spread satsang. So he had to leave. So Sri Maharaj called Gosher Kaurabai and told her that, you know, I have stayed here for one and a half months with my saints and devotees, that which is a very long time, in that Bhagwan usually didn't stay at anyone's home for even more than one or two days because there was so much satsang to spread. There was so much, so many devotees' uh, invitation that Bhagwan had to attend. So, even then, Kushal Kaurabai's affection was so strong that Bhagwan stayed there for a month and a half. But when Bhagwan broke the news that I have to go now, then she became very sad and gloomy and depressed. But Bhagwan saw that Kushal Kaurabai developed very strong faith in him and had a very divine vision of him. So, Bhagwan revealed some glory of his greatness to her. And through that, the queen developed so much, so much maima, so much importance of Bhagwan, that before Bhagwan left, she stared at Sriji Maharaj and completely just absorbed that whole idol inside of her heart. Each and every part of Sriji Maharaj, his Charnanvim, the 16 symbols, each and every part, each and every curve, each and every, you can say, mole or even hair, she completely, completely recorded in her mind. Just like how a computer has an internal hard disk of, let's say, one terabyte, and whatever you throw inside, it's going to store, no matter how big the program is, and it's going to store and it's going to stay locked inside in the same exact way. Kushal Gurbai completely 
recorded that idol of Bhagwan, what Bhagwan was wearing exactly at that time, how he looked, how many times he blinked, and she absorbed it and internalized it into her heart. Just like how in the Vachanamrut, Bhagwan gave an example of her. This is her story. Why was Bhagwan Swamiran so pleased upon her? This is the reason. Why? Because Kushal Gurbai, her darshan, the way she did darshan of Bhagwan was so divine, was so completely authentic compared to any other, you can say, saint or even male devotee or even female devotee that Bhagwan Swaminarayan had to say her name in the Vachnamrut. This is how great her spiritual status was. This is how great her, you can say, inclination was to do darshan of Bhagwan. And so, she completely internalized the form. And then, sadly, crying, she had completely given the okay that Bhagwan, now you may leave. And what the story is, is exactly, Bhagwan had come with many, many saints and devotees. So, they were all on, uh, some were on horseback, some were walking. And there was a pathway to leading to her kingdom and Bhagwan and all the santos and devotees were going and leaving. And as they got further and further, Kushal Kurbai stayed there right in front of her kingdom by the entrance gate and watched Bhagwan until he could not be seen anymore. And then, not only that, but the dust cloud that had gathered from the marching of Santo and Bhagwan and the horses that would gather, she stayed there until that dust completely settled to the ground. And then, after that, after that, all that dust was settled, because of the, you can say, she missed Bhagwan so much that right there and then she left her body and went to Akshardham. This is her story. This is how much affection she had for Bhagwan. But our focus as of right now is the way she did darshan, is the way she internalized the form of Bhagwan. When we come to Mandir or when we go to our assembly and when we see the form of God, do not think of it as a mere statue. If it was a mere statue, then how can one get the divine darshan of Bhagwan? There has been so many incidences that Bhagwan has given darshan of that it still continues as of right now. I can even tell you a story as of right now that recently happened here in Mangal Murti Pratishta Mahotso. When Puja Guruji was doing the Abhishek of Gansham Maharaj, during the Pran Pratishta Vidhi, Guruji had the vision of God, the darshan of God, and Bhagwan told Guruji at that time that someone in this crowd is going to have my darshan, but you will always have my darshan. And then he went back in the, the idol of Gansham Maharaj. He projected out, told this to uh, Guruji, and then projected back in. After that, someone did have darshan of Bhagwan, and that person came and told Guruji that I had the darshan of Gansham Maharaj, proving that as of right now, Gansham Maharaj is still here with us always, and will always be with us. But it's just a matter of realizing that he is with us. I'm also reminded of another story that I want to share with you before getting to the formula. In the village of Jetalpur, Bhagwan was sitting with his santos and devotees, and santos and devotees had made a nice hindoro, a swing for Bhagwan, and they're swinging him back and forth. And from afar, at that time, there was many, many opposers of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So, at that time, there was actually a Bao, meaning a very, uh, you could say, one who didn't believe in Bhagwan, let's just put it that way, 
who was walking on the path, and he saw Bhagwan swinging there, and he was thinking in his mind. He was just thinking that look at this Swaminarayan. He's saying that he's God. He is fake. He is nothing. I am actually more powerful than him. He was just thinking, and he was walking along his path. Now, Bhagwan saw him coming, and he just looked, and he just glanced at him for just one second. But as that person was walking, he 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 kept walking, and he, just like how we are grazed in something, our attention goes completely, and our neck turns, even if we keep we still walk. Our neck is still looking towards that way. That person walked until he could not turn his neck anymore and then walked off. And then Bhagwan started laughing. And the santos and devotees asked, Maharaj, nothing had happened. Why are you laughing? Bhagwan said at that time that that person, he was my opposer and he was thinking bad of me, but he had my darshan. So he's going to get the realm of Indra. Meaning Indra is the one who controls the rains and waters. But the point of the story is that even a person who thought bad of Bhagwan but still had his darshan got such an elevated rank, such an elevated power, such a status then just think about one who isn't his opposer. Just think about one who is his follower, what he will get, what kind of happiness he will attain. Therefore, having the darshan of Bhagwan is very important. And here's how you do it. Here's the formula to having the perfect, perfect darshan of Bhagwan. First and foremost, no looking side to side, up or down, anywhere. You know, in a horse race, there's multiple horses racing side by side, and there's gates. And the horse rider is sitting, the jockey, he's sitting on top of the horse. But the horse, there's, he's very, very, uh, you can say, uh, he can't stay stable because when he sees other horses, he's going crazy. So what they do is they have goggles put around that horse. So even if the horse looks on either side, Nothing can be seen. And those goggles are put on so the horse only looks straight and focuses at his path to finish line. In the same exact way, when we come to Mandir or when we are in our puja or when we're in our home and we have our garma there and we're having the darshan of God, put those goggles on. Do not look side to side, up or down, anywhere. No matter what volume, no matter what is going on, when you're sitting down for darshan, nothing should be on your mind except having the darshan of Bhagwan. Number two, an attentive mind. Meaning, even physically your eyes are controlled, but if your mind is going off to other places like your homework or your project or some social event that you're going to go to, then darshan is useless as well. So, keeping your mind very, very attentive and very, very focused on Bhagwan, thinking and looking at each and every one of his parts, body parts, in such a divine manner. And third, concentrated vision. Meaning, just like an attentive mind, your vision, your vrutti, it's called. A vrutti is something which is an invisible vision that one has from one's soul. It's everywhere that we're looking at. It's very difficult to explain. But let's just keep it simple and put and say concentrated vision. Looking at Bhagwan with a concentrated vision. These three things are the formula to having the perfect darshan of Bhagwan according to Vachnamrut Sarangpur's second chapter and according to Kushal Kurbai's method. If we do practice this method of having darshan, then just like how Bhagwan became pleased on Kushal Kurbai and how she did Darshan, in the same way he would become pleased upon us when we come to Mandir or we do Darshan of Bhagwan anywhere. So please apply this formula to develop happiness and to please Bhagwan Swaminarayan.
घनश्याम महाराज नीज श्रीपतिम श्रीधर सर्वेश्वर भक्तिदरमात्म वासुदेव हरे माधव केशव गांधम गारम स्वामीनारायण नीलकंठम भजे घनश्याम महाराज नीज